I got some interesting feedback from a patron of mine, Satellite Jack, regarding my latest uh, Q&A regarding hookup culture and, and the previous video it was related to. And I'd like to read it out because there are some really nice points and I wanted to sort of end with some of my own. He says, I've been trying to examine myself for blind spots, which this is an important thing. I agree. So that we're not too rigid and it keeps us a little bit open, open to new ideas, open to an open conversation, rather than always debating and defending our axioms. He continues, when the cognitive dissonance subsides, but I'm still hungry for growth, I have a trick to try to flush things out from the darkness. I journal about something that's been irritating me until I distill my opinion down to a sentence or simple thought. Then I earnestly try to hold or be sympathetic to the opposing view for a day or a week or some specific period of time. I'm not sure why you do it for so long, but I could see it to be a useful exercise for seeing another point of view to make sure you're being as objective as you can. He continues, hopefully I can form some sympathetic perspective that's counter to my original opinion. Yeah, exactly. But be careful not to be sympathetic to evil or in terms of people pleasers, they're so sympathetic. That's their default position. He continues, then I try to journal or think through the reconciliation. Yeah, I've said it before, journaling and writing is a great way to express your thinking, read it as a third person, i.e. the observer. And a lot of this, seeing things from both sides, seeing the fairness of the situation, is that third person observer seeing things as fair and relational. I think writing is a time-tested way of providing this to yourself, of rounding yourself out personally, and as a consequence, how you express that rounding out with others, being able to exercise that third person, the fair arbiter of two people with opposing viewpoints. You know, fairly judging the interaction to distill it to what might be true, right, and just. He continues, the more fundamental and longer held the idea I choose to challenge, the bigger potential blind spot I could possibly reveal. And another great thing is it helps you develop sympathy from seeing another person's point of view, i.e. this third person judging the situation fairly or trying to. He says, on the other hand, there's a lot of fool's gold and empty attempts that come from these experiments. Yeah, that's the other danger I was going to say. A lot of wasted time in trying to be fair to every point of view. Oh, the person who sort of murdered a whole bunch of people. What about their childhood? What about this? What about that? You know, looking at things from every angle, but really there's nothing useful or practical you can do moving forward that'll help the present or the future. He continues wondering if you have or know of any tricks for finding blind spots. Yeah, a lot of the times these blind spots could manifest as anything. They could be sort of childhood trauma, things you don't want to face. A way of looking that is traumatic, scars and, and things you don't want to face that you're fearful of. Uh, a lot of these blind spots are elegant cognitive evasions. The things I'd say is the underlying principle of fairness, being that third person observer that can look at two people's different points of view, not just think of yourself, not just think of them, but try to come up with something that's objective between the two. He continues, I think the lockdown blues have us looking for ways to be constructive. After literature, familiar peers and media start to feel flat, there's a need for some ebb and flow of some type of personal progress. Yeah, I agree. I've noticed some men when I talk to them, particularly when they're talking about, and you can tell they're referencing past traumas and um, what they may have gone through. Instead of talking to me plainly and intelligently, um, they put on a professor's persona that's so far from the naive person that was hurt in the past so long ago that I sometimes question who the person is that's talking to me. For instance, uh, the lexicon they use when a lot of men talk to me almost feel like their words are puppeteered by the child uh, in a superhero costume that was hurt so long ago and has promised to themselves never to be hurt again. But back to the sorts of any tricks or techniques for blind spots – Again, is simplicity and going back to first principles. Uh, the first one might be, is at its core, what is the thing in and, in and of itself? So, for instance, a relationship is fundamentally trust, love, kindness, safety, understanding, empathy, and all those things. 
And if you're trying to justify someone else's behavior that is anything but that, they're acting like a real arse. You can't keep excusing a person because of their childhood or I hit you because I love you so much. There, doesn't that show you? Things that don't make sense or aren't about what the thing is at its core should be really questioned. First principles, back to simplicity of what the thing is. Basically, look at things as soberly as you can, not in a drunk-like, romantic, excusing, oh, we have to understand the murderer. None of those. Intellectually, you can learn, but you don't excuse bad behavior. If it's not civil, you should be asking, there needs to be a lot to excuse this behavior and not the default of, I will do everything in my power not to judge this person. If things like civil discourse, love, empathy, cooperation mean anything, then we need to judge and defend that um, in accordance with how someone's acting. Someone's childhood trauma is not an excuse for psychological abuse and passive aggression now, if someone's treating you that way. The harder you might hit me physically does not equate to the amount you love me. You'll notice today that a lot of people use sophistry to excuse their addictions and biases and bad behaviors. And sometimes I suppose subconsciously because we would like to be excused. If we misstep, we start excusing others a little bit too much. And today we do it as a default reflex. I don't think we exercise enough self-control or believe we have the capacity so we excuse everything. The second technique or thing to keep in mind is basic fairness. The golden rule, if you will. Would they appreciate this treatment themselves? Would you appreciate being talked to the way you're talking to this person? It's fairly simple, but a lot of times when you're in these interactions with people, broad and complex philosophical trains of thought um, don't really serve you. Very simple and basic truths and ways of treating each other do. If your friend was being abused in this way by his partner, what would you say to him? How would you defend him? Defend yourself in that exact same manner. And the third thing I'd say is, I'm reminded of a quote, good design is subtraction, not addition. A lot of times we add a lot of philosophical thought and we think the more we add, the closer we're coming to the truth. But in fact, the simpler we make it, pairing it back to first principles and what is the thing at its, at its essence, the, the closer we come to the truth. So in the same way that good design is subtraction, good thinking is, is subtraction as well, I find. And that goes for writing as well. The way you think, the way you journal, the concise nature with which you can sort of talk and enunciate what you want to say uh, should be the way you process things too. Simplify the interaction. Don't complicate it with a lot of sophistry and um, intellectual or verbal baggage to excuse somebody. Is it fair? Does it make sense? Is the thing presented in front of you that you're listening to, is the narrative you're seeing as the observer, is it a good story or is it really an objectively abusive nat narrative where one person's really suffering and the other person's a tyrant? So I hope this was useful to you. Thank you, Satellite Jack, uh, for the patronage and Remember to subscribe. It helps YouTube share my videos around. Make sure you hit the bell. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video, found it useful. Give me a thumbs down if you didn't. Share and support my work. And if you feel like saying thank you, there are donation options below. I'll talk to you very soon, gentlemen. Good evening. Bye.